podcast and if you can't tell by all the mouth breathing we're here with a bunch of fighters who may or may not be able to breathe out of their nose <laughs> so you're going to hear a lot of ex exhalation <laughs> coming from these guys i'm here with tj dillashaw danny castillo justin buckles a bunch of savages from the team alpha male what man up? it's been good hanging out with you guys this week it's been awesome i'm moving to austin Fuck yeah, let's make it happen what's in sacramento anyways come on yeah just our team yeah i know just gotta <laughs> move, move the team here. move the building yeah, yeah my family my mom all my friends <laughs> that's right. it's they cool i got new, too, i've met right? some new friends everyone's great <laughs> yeah yeah that'll work i mean i know you guys got that country club club living in your gym out there but yeah. you know heard some stories that it's really like it's kind of like somewhere between an MMA facility and like Canyon Ranch Health Spa. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, we won right? we won gym of the year, so I mean, it's got to be pretty nice. You walk in, everything's state of the art. You know, we uh -huh. got we got one toilet, one shower. It's nice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. We had one a urinal, urinal. That was, yeah, that was broken for like three months. So <laughs> either if you had to go number one, number two, you're just waiting in line. <laughs> but, but clearly it is not the gym that makes the fighters it's the fighters that make the gym and you guys have been on a hell of a run yeah, how's that been to be a part of that it's been amazing man i mean just everything's happening the way it's planned out just how Dwayne told us it was going to happen and uh things been clicking and yeah we got the best gym i mean you go in there every training session is a ufc fight and mm -hmm. you, know, you got two three four and five ranked guys in the world it's uh it's awesome I don't think there's there's clearly not any gym out there that especially in the lower weights has anywhere near the kind of caliber of fighter that you guys have. No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, I think uh, even our up and comers, super tough, really tough guys coming up. There's no gym that has like homegrown fighters like we do too. Everyone's everyone's kind of got their start there. No one you made mean it. You smoke weed that's local. I or what do. What do you mean by homegrown I fighters? I do. I do. I definitely do. <laughs> uh, it's legal now in California. Oh wait, medically, yeah. Yeah. But, but you yeah. got all kinds of things fucked up. I heard you mouth breathing over there. That's got to be a reason to smoke weed. <laughs> yes, definitely. That's why my nose is so clogged. All the smoke. <laughs> Bad allergic reaction. <laughs> uh, imagine that's more allergic reaction to the leather that's been repeatedly bounced that's off your true. nose. Three times broken. Still straight. Well, a little yeah, gay. Yeah, it looks pretty. A little gay, but... <laughs> Yeah, this nose doesn't get all nice like this without getting punched. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, one of the things that's impressed me about hanging out with all you guys, and we have a couple more on the team. We got Chris, uh, Chris Holdsworth, been here as well. Sticks, course, yeah. sticks, sticks. Yeah, sticks. Yeah, stick boy. <laughs> and then, of course, your coach Dwayne Bang, who we'll have on the On It podcast as well. But it really, it's it's cool to see how much of a family you guys are. You know, it's like a big gay family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're sticking with it. You like it. You've got an idea in your head. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what the hell. Uh, and, wrong uh, team. Wrong team. <laughs> but but that's but that's it. You guys are always laughing, joking. But then when it's time to work, you guys give it hell. I got to watch some of your training session, and uh, and put you guys through a little strength and conditioning. So I think that's you know to me that's one thing that's got to make this whole journey a lot more fun, but also a lot more effective. Definitely, uh, I I feel like it. Uh, you can draw from your teammates. Everything's um, a little bit better. It's kind of like here at on it. Like when you walk in the door, everyone's super friendly. Everyone's on the same page, same attitude, same same everything, same outlook. And when you have that, those types of people, like-minded people together, like crazy cool things happen. And um, you know, the team is getting so so good and sparring practices are a little hairy sometimes because even the weakest guy on the team is learning from the best striking coach in the world and um you know you get hit a lot more these days than you didn't before and even though it's controlled and he's helping us uh be better mixed martial artists it's still, still rough sometimes i hear it's particularly rough when you're sparring this savage over here <laughs> tj dillashaw yeah, I'm, I get, I'm getting in whispers and, and little weird glances are like yeah Especially when you're fucking fighting TJ. <laughs> yeah, I like to uh, I like to go first. Yeah. That way he doesn't catch a good rhythm because once he's uh, when he caught that rhythm and he he's, it, it just sucks. So if I catch him first, his warm up round, it's the best. Or I like to go last round too, but then but then you're tired too. Yeah, but I take one off before I go with it. <laughs> yeah, I have a, a a competitive issue, man. I like it super aggressive and uh, just always want to win. I don't even care if, like I said, we're playing Monopoly, whatever it is. Like I'm, I'm gonna try to win. You know, you're gonna try yeah. to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna Monopoly take all your houses. <laughs> yeah, I just try to avoid Dillashaw, honestly. Like, uh, there's nothing worse than getting your ass beat by a little dude. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like. One
I have a walk around 180. He fights at 135, and he's like kicking my ass, like picking me up. Like 180. Like yeah, right. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in your bra. <laughs> no, but uh, the, the the team situation is awesome. You get to uh, work with your best friends. You know, I mean, not mm -hmm. only do we get to go and beat each other up, your friends get to let you punch them in the face. You go out and have lunch afterwards. You're hanging out all the time. It's uh, it's awesome. It makes you enjoy your job a lot more. I'm sure. I feel like it makes you grow too, because you know, when you're the new guy on the team, everybody. Uh, uh, you were there for a little bit of a uh, Cody no loves thing where mm. we just had a field day. It was a per, it was a roast for an hour just making jokes about his huge head. Huge. If, head. if we can possibly get That's this on the head. podcast, we should we should definitely try to do it. Someone send this over to my Twitter or something like that, and I'll retweet it. Yeah. So there's this kid on our team. He just started training. He's awesome. Really good kid. And uh, he really cares about how he looks. You know, he's got the tan skin, the the waxed eyebrows, fake the lined, tan skin, yeah, the lined hair, like perfect beard. Like, he really cares about how he looks. You Just know? sexy. Yeah, yeah. We showed up and we, we thought he was too good looking. Like, there's no way he could be on our team. You know, he's like <laughs> his eyebrows. What do you mean? Your team was started by Uriah. Yes, yeah, Danny. Danny wanted to have sex with his. Face. I didn't know where <laughs> I was supposed to kick him or fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> he was just perfectly lined up beard. I was like, do they have a ruler? Is there like a balance beam that? His it's, hairline is hand perfect. plucked. <laughs> well, so so he has this fight, right? It's a pretty big fight for him, and he finally gets called out. But Uriah finally tweets him, you know, sends out an Instagram. Well, he won him. the fight. He won the fight by knockout. Yeah. Like so after training with Team Alpha Male, he's yeah. on the right track. He's uh, kicking ass. Head two no with us. <laughs> head by head, but yeah. <laughs> no, okay. hey, he's gonna have to be <laughs> careful. Hey, his Bro, opponent, his opponent <laughs> shattered <laughs> both his hands in the first round. <laughs> he's he's two zero oh, and 72. <laughs> <laughs> 72 disqualifications <laughs> by way of headbutt. He's yeah. like, I can't fucking help it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I go he, to turn my head and people get knocked out. <laughs> he posts this picture of his weigh-ins and he's just flexing in the camera and that's the one that Uriah decides to retweet and his head just looks giant in it because he cut a bunch of weight, his body's all small, he's like leaning into the camera. <laughs> so he just looks like he has this giant head and then like 3,000 comments later you know, everyone's just ragging on his head. And worldwide was. trending. I bet he's, yeah, worldwide of his head. He's at home crying right now about it. Dude, he is. On his <laughs> big just, pillow. <laughs> <laughs> He's at home crying, flooding houses yeah. <laughs> with his giant tears <laughs> coming, coming like. <laughs> uh, uh, it makes it so much funnier if you know the guy. Someone's got to send out the picture. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely retweet that picture. Yeah. You need to have him on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just video his head. New <laughs> headphones. <laughs> have to, have Reinforced headphones. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna stretch these out. These won't fit. Him. We'll have to tape two together <laughs> <laughs> and just use the extreme side of either one. We're, we're, we're making a lot of fun of this guy, but I'm sure he's a great dude, great oh, yeah. fighter. Just a random weird shot that looks like he went Super Mario style on his head. Yeah. It's pretty hilarious. But um, so you guys both, you guys all got different stuff coming up in the works. You got something coming up on Memorial Day, right, Yeah, TJ? I'm fighting uh, May 24th against uh, Tegei Muzugaki. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be a great fight for me. I run through him and hopefully get my title shot. So what's his, what's his style? I'm not, I'm not familiar with him. He's been around for a long time. He's, he's pretty well-rounded. I mean, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call him an expert in anything. Mm -hmm. um, he's, got, he's got a lot of weaknesses, but uh, he's a super tough fighter. Likes to brawl. Um, he's got decent takedowns, you know. I, f I feel like he's he's aware of jujitsu, but he's not deadly with it. Right, you know? right, right. So uh, I'm just gonna be the better athlete. I feel like you know I'm just just as well rounded, but just a better athlete. Mm -hmm. And Japanese necktie is Ugh. that is that where we're going, Joe? I'm so for those of you who haven't seen it, Joe Rogan showed uh, so TJ Jellis the the Japanese necktie, which is a uh, one step different than the darce choke yeah like, yep. like a little one move ahead of that it's yeah it's before you can get to the darce choke fully locked up it's a sweet little transition that uh i feel very comfortable with hitting and uh i'm going for that on it bonus of <laughs> yeah. five thousand dollars yeah in my fight japanese necktie to finish Random it with a bonus. japanese necktie just don't get <laughs> just don't focus too much on it man i don't want to fuck you up oh, you know dude, what I mean? <laughs> this is not gonna matter i got it all right man i like it i like it and then danny what do you got coming up man april 26 uh ufc 171 Two, yep. uh, John Jones Tresura is the main event. Um, the really cool card. Where is where is that one? At? It's in Baltimore. I um, love Baltimore. Not. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't really have too much fun there. Uh, <clears throat> but it's really cool. Uh, we have I have two other of my teammates. Joseph Benavidez, number one ranked uh, featherweight in the world. We also have one of our young prospects, Andre Feely. It's the second fight. Touchy in the, Feely. Touchy Feely. Andre Touchy Feely. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, he's coming up to his second UFC fight against a, a really big name, um, Max nice. Holloway. Mm-hmm. So it, it's going to be great to feed off of that. Um, Who are you we, fighting? I am fighting Charlie Brenneman. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My pair guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah wrestler yeah, yeah. cut down um, from 70s to 55s. Uh, it's it's going to be a great fight for me. I, I feel like, um, you know, this last year I've learned so much and I've come so far. And um, it's starting to show in practice. And, um, you know, my last fight was pretty tough fight. Uh, I fought Edson Barbosa, lost a close, uh, close And you were, you were a big underdog in that fight. I remember yeah. taking a look at the odds. And then you came out and just started playing face punch. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It, it was awesome, man. I, I can't even... Um, I can't explain it because I grew up in Sacramento. Sacramento is my hometown. And um, after the first round, every I was exhausted. I look up, everyone's on their feet. Just they were chanting Danny, and I was like, something that's never happened for me ever. And it was uh, just a warm feeling. Mm-hmm. I sat in the stool. I was like, fuck, I got ten more minutes. But like, I was trying to live in the moment as much as possible because a lot of the times, not that I'm uh, really nervous, but. At the end of the day, if you win or lose, it's half your money if you lose. So, yeah. you know, you change your whole lifestyle. So there's a lot riding on these fights. And especially you put three months of your life, four months of your life of grinding, training hard, waking up like, eh, I don't want to get out of bed because I felt like I got hit by a bus for this one moment that only lasts 15 minutes. So uh, the beginning of my career is just kind of just stressing about money. But now like money's a little bit better. Um, and uh, now I can actually enjoy it. So my walkouts, everything, the, the weigh-ins, everything is that much better. Like I can smile and feel happy. And you've been you've been around a little bit. You're 34 years old now. How many yeah. fights have you been in? Uh, I've been in 22 fights. Um, I think uh, what do we got? Like this will be my 18th fight with Zufa. Mm-hmm. Had eight fights at the WC. Um, nine fight. This is my 10th fight with the UFC. So. Uh, been a, been around for a while, and um, you know I feel like I haven't reached my full potential, but uh, it's exciting, man. So that's cool to hear. I mean, a lot of people at 34 would just be saying, "Yeah, you know, I'll just make a few more purses and you know get out." But you're still seems like you're still in it to improve, get better, and fuck maybe make a run. Then, huh? Yeah, I mean the whole reason why if you don't think you could be the champ, or if that's not in, in one of your goals, then why are you fighting for? It's like uh, I mean, not. It's not like we get paid millions of dollars. Like, I'm sure a third-string kicker, third-string punter makes a lot more money than me. And, um, you know, it's it's the goal. It's to be the best man in the world. And I think that's what everyone at this table wants to be, including yourself. It doesn't matter if it's in the cage, just in life, you know, in general. You just want to be the best person you can be and be happy. And uh, I'm just starting to appreciate that. Some guy told me, he was like, dude, your 30s, I was dreading my 30s a little bit. And he's like, dude, your 30s are the best the best decade of your life and now that i'm 34 it's uh you know i'm so much happier yeah i have to agree i'm 33 and i can echo that you know you take the wisdom that you learn from there still have the fire and uh combine the fire with the experience and can bring out the best certainly for sure certainly and justin you're from alaska yeah you like to punch people what's yep, up that's true tell us about your past it's here. tougher in alaska <laughs> Everything's tougher in Alaska. That's true. I mean, getting girls got to be tougher in Alaska. That's tough. You don't lose your girlfriend. You just lose your turn in Alaska. <laughs> the, the, you lose your turn. <laughs> I like that. I don't know yeah. if I understand it. But I Basically, like it. there's not very many chicks up there. <laughs> oh, I get it. They're you all Eskimos. Lose. You know. I heard. I heard that there's an Eskimo tradition that if you're going to visit an Eskimo, this you is get true. to sleep with the chief's wife. That's that's the polite way of going about it. And the fatter, the better in Eskimo culture. So if you have a girlfriend and, and any of these guys are coming to stay at your house, do they bang your girlfriend? Yes. Well, all of his girlfriends are dudes, though, so they kind of pass. Yeah. There's some, some dude from Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> that's well, a code word. The well, dude that, from Alaska. So, but that is, the, that is the polite way to do it. That is the actual that, traditional. That's like, that's like crazy Eskimo stuff. That's, you know, that's like some tribe stuff out, out in the Arctic, you know. So you got to really brave the cold to do that. So anybody thinking about going to Alaska to get up, you know, pick up on this Eskimo pussy. It's going to be really, really cold. Yeah. You want to go to one of the villages and just drive around with like a bottle of vodka, like out your window, (laughs) and then they'll just come to you. They use like whale blubber's lube. I mean, how's it going? (laughs) Crunchy peanut butter. (laughs) That's the prison style. That's that's, that's Anchorage Penitentiary right there. You spent a little time in juvie or what? (laughs) No, I've heard some stories about juvie. They do use peanut butter there. I've gotten two traffic tickets in my life. I was what framed. was traffic tickets? I was framed. In Alaska? I was framed. No, 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 in California. 
They don't have they don't have people giving traffic tickets in Alaska, do they? Yeah, they do. Fuck. State all, troopers. Yeah, on moose just walking around. Just yeah, like, yeah. Like, give a moose a traffic ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? There's the term Eskimo brothers, and I'm I'm thinking that might you know what that we're term? all Eskimo brothers. <laughs> you guys all are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I figured as much. That's so if but, you all sleep with the same dude, right? You become <laughs> Eskimo brothers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> That'll work. But I wonder if that's where the term comes from, because you know the Eskimos will let you sleep with their wife. Oh yeah, yeah. Does that, that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I think we should do that now in modern days. Not just Eskimos. Well, I read this book called Sex at Dawn, right? And he talks about the natural state of man, <clears throat> Dr. Chris Ryan. And the natural state of man is to live in small tribes. And in those tribes, you share all resources. You share child raised, you share the food you kill, hunter-gatherer societies. And that's what we're bred to do. We're not bred to be like, like gorillas who have a harem and fight to the death and protect their women or lions. Tiny penises. Tiny penises, tiny balls. We're more like chimps. We got, we got large balls for our primate selves, large penises, and that's because our sperm is meant to compete with other, with other sperm that's already inside the puss. Yeah. So the, the idea is that you know, we're, not, we're not one of these kind of harem protective kind of people. We're designed to live in tribes that share everything from females to food to whatever and that's what our instinctive nature is but because of agriculture and money and how things are set up and the dissolution of the tribe everybody's like no nah, this is my shit this is my shit and then jealousy and all these things are kind of taught but it's kind of a different concept to do and i think nobody's really that i know of have been too successful in kind of recreating that but it's kind of interesting. That's why I'm so competitive, though. I'm trying to get that pussy first. You know? like, <laughs> that's the whole point. Jesus. Right? <laughs> He's already like, now, how do I win? In yeah, that how system? do I win this game? <laughs> how do I win in that system? Hey, Chris Ryan talks about uh, uh, bomber pilots in World War II, right? Yeah. How they all hooked up before, and it was to show how good. The bomber pilots didn't hook up. No, no <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> Uh, so the girlfriends hooked up or the wives or whatever yeah, hooked up. Everybody, and they went, they, every, yeah. yeah, then they flew in and they had like a 70% rate of dying, right? Like seven out of 10 yeah, so, dead. So the, so the risk of death was so high that they dissolved their normal kind of, the norms that people had. So all the wives and all the husbands, they would all sleep together. That way, any of the kids would have parents to raise them. And so the idea was if nobody really knew who the parent was anyways, then it wouldn't matter. Everybody would raise these kids no matter... Which ones are the pilots? So check out my idea. Yeah, go for it. Team alpha male, same formula before fights. Just a big (laughs) orgy, just hooking up. Everyone brings their girlfriend. They can come too, I guess. And then (laughs) then we do our thing. Then you go to war the next day and fight. You know what I mean? That would actually be very much in line with people's nature. Although everybody else looking in would be like, what the fuck are these crazy assholes? Haters. Hashtag haters. (laughs) But that would probably be something that scratched the itch that's like inside us all because it's, it is kind of weird, you know. You that carve gay out these, itch inside of all of us. <laughs> you carve out these giant houses and you get these you get these situations set up. And <laughs> I'll stop with the gay jokes. I'm sorry, Castillo. Dude, but I, I'm just waving him off. He's just looking like, at me doing yeah, that. He's stop. stuck. He's stuck. He's sweating about it. it. That's all I think about. Oh, I'm dripping sweat. My right armpit, especially. Uh, yeah, but you have, you know. It seems to make sense that if you really do have brothers and you guys have this situation, you do go to battle together. And I think that's important. You got to really trust the other people because how this thing gets fucked up is you get the people who you haven't gone through the same initiations. You don't really feel like they're part of your tribe. You know, you wouldn't want to share your girlfriend or have them raise your kids or share your resources with somebody like that. So having some kind of thing that bonds them together, like the tribes used to have rites of passage, initiations, you know, going to battle together which you guys do, it makes a lot more sense. I guess we kind of have that formula a little bit because the new people, I guess their rite of passage would be for us to just make to, fun of them until we break them down. And for they, Danny to make fun of them and then to spar with Killishaw. That's yeah. the rite of passage. Yeah. And then for them to bring their girlfriends to one of the parties and we just all like have fun. <laughs> and if they come back, then they're part of the team. You yeah. know? But most of the yeah. time they don't come back. We do, actually, but before someone goes off to a a, a big fight like Uriah or TJ, we usually all get together uh, the night because the UFC flies you out five days before. So, like, six, seven days out, we have a kind of like a potluck dinner, and Mm -hmm. we all get together kind of just to celebrate um, because we're all all winners. So it's like we're going to celebrate the win. If we can't – a lot of us can't just go to Japan or Australia – 
the uh, at different places so we just kind of get together and have a good time and it's not like a stressful time it's a, it's just a fun time we're eating laughing having a great time like we do every single day it's like we really enjoy life like that's how we are in the locker room before our fights too people kind of trip out they like we're back in the locker room having fun before we go out and fight we're all joking around and and met because we usually have like three guys fighting on the cards so we have a whole group of guys in the locker room hanging out and it's just, just take over yeah mm-hmm. we're just having fun the entire time and other camps don't like it they're like nervous freaking out like you know you gotta fight soon aren't, aren't you worried about that it's like dude we do this every day you know it's yeah. kind of with way we, tougher guys yeah we enjoy it. it makes it makes it so much more enjoyable yeah, I can just from watching so many fights, you can see the people who on the walk-ins who are really relaxed and you can tell they're in the moment, you know, they're just kind of breathing, looking around, feeling alive. You know, you get that way not by stressing and being tense and trying to put your hard face on. Yeah. Anytime I see someone walk out with their hard face, I'm like, "Uh-oh, motherfucker, you're going to yeah. get fucked up." Do I think what changed it for me is like what Buckles was cornering me and he's like, "Dude, people would pay to be in your situation right now. People would pay to be able to do this walkout and enjoy like getting into the cage and everyone watching." But, but they can't pay for it. That's exactly. They, they can have all the money in the world, yeah, but they can't you, do what you do right now. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like, and that's be a superhero, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Yeah. Exactly. It just kind of like I think he said that to me in one of my fights in San Jose. It just kind of hit me and just. He said that hit, to you. Yeah, and just. Man. Shut up, Danny. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I said that shit to Danny too. I told him he was the only one. <laughs> yeah, I feel I feel cheated on right now. You actually. should. God yeah. damn it! Hey, this share, podcast is over. everything, yeah. including Buckles' words of wisdom <laughs> and his mouth. Whatever. <laughs> that's, that's the way of the tribe. But yeah, he's yeah. absolutely right. That is something that. It was just such a slim amount of the population mm-hmm. would be able to do. And those, and you hear from fighters, especially on a bad night, they're like, dude, I fucking hardly remember anything. Mm-hmm. And when they say that, it's usually because they just weren't in the moment. Yeah. You know, they're locked in yeah. some safe place of their mind because the nerves got to them mm-hmm. and they kind of retreat back in their head. And that shit might as well not even have happened. And, yeah. that's, and that's a shame because this is a really rare fucking sliver that you guys get to do. I mean, maybe a... Maybe the fucking maybe football players when they get their name called out in the tunnel in a big game like the Super Bowl get to feel that. But then even then it's a totally different feeling because you're with 52 other people. Mm-hmm. You know this one it's all you. It's your song. It's your crowd. You know everybody's kind of looking at you. And the contest, you know, is as real as possible. I mean MMA is competition with the least amount of rules. Everything mm-hmm. else they're like, eh, you guys will fight each other, but we're gonna throw a ball in there and you're gonna use the ball to kind of see who wins. <laughs> you guys are like. I got these, yep. and I got my feet, yep. and we'll fucking figure it out. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a great situation to be in. I, I mean, it doesn't get any better for me. I love it. I think so. they should eliminate cups to make it more real. <laughs> <laughs> Just no cups, no <laughs> mouthpiece. <laughs> Just fighting to the death. I well, there, is some, there is some thought that it would be a lot safer if they got rid of the gloves. You know? well, yeah, you wouldn't so be able to hit as hard. You wouldn't be able to hit as hard, mm-hmm. and you know the concussions certainly would go down mm-hmm. from that. Because people think, oh, so savage, just going bare knuckle. Well, really, it's the concussive impact from being able to swing like a fucking maniac and hit someone in the top of the head. Because mm-hmm. you're, gl- I mean, you can still break your hand, obviously. So they go no wraps. They go just wraps and no padding on the. They go the wraps dipped in caramel like Skittles, M and M's. Like to make it vicious, like Thai style. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then in that in that case, you know, and you see these old bare knuckle fights. There's actually a documentary called Knuckle. Yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. Uh, right? Yeah, there's just a family of of, of pikeys. Yeah, yeah, gypsies. So there's a lot of cuts. You know, cuts are certainly a problem. But other than that, the brain doesn't quite take that same concussive impact as it would. It's like the leather helmet in, in football. Yeah. yeah, actually better for you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a huge problem. They just had an article out. Well, today. like rugby, you know. I mean, rugby, you got leather or no helmet, but mm-hmm. so you got to fucking watch yourself. You mm-hmm. can't just spear each other in the head; it'll kill each other. Yeah. You know, and that doesn't happen because people tackle a different way, knowing that they don't have that. I mean, that's why boxing is even worse for your head. You can take three times as many punches in a round and be all right. You know, you get concussed, you get a ten count or whatever. You know, mm-hmm. you get to get punched so much more. And it's a lot worse for you because they have more padding on their hands. Man, I don't for know us, how you get hit that hard, you're going to sleep. Yeah, totally. I don't know how much worse box or how boxing is so much worse than MMA. Everyone says that, but if you look at fights where a guy eats like a shin across the face, you know what I mean? Then he hits the ground, and then the guy hits him like six more times. I don't know how much worse you could possibly have head trauma than that. 
like a shin bone. I guess I just never okay. had that situation. Well, that the, well, the I'm idea just is, it, you know what I'm saying. The like, idea is that that usually puts you to sleep. Yeah. You know, in boxing, you're constantly. How many times are you going to shake the brain off yeah. the skull? You know. Yeah. Like, and it's not usually the one, the one big shake that knocks you out. It's just constantly shaking over yeah. time that does the most damage, presumably. And even the best boxers, even Mayweather gets hit. Um, Rarely. Or, yeah, but still, I mean, that's. You're you're gonna get hit in a boxing fight. I think it's fight. probably you know probably what does the most damage in MMA is the training. Yeah, you 100%. know I mean because the gloves are bigger in training mm-hmm. and you're you're going hard in the training. I don't think it's necessarily the fights. I mean, sure, sure you can get a concussion in the fights and that's no good. Mm-hmm. But the training seems like that's probably what would take the biggest toll. And I was reading something from Johnny Hendricks who was saying how he wears the full on chin chin guards everything in training. He doesn't take heavy. Headshots and training. And he Lawler said an he had sparred for uh, five years or something before he went to American Top Team. Mm-hmm. Heavy sparring. Maybe they would have got hit less in their fight if they sparred and not moved their head. They were just like both punching bags in that That's fight, you true. know? Like most punches landed ever. <laughs> it was, I yeah. think, yeah. yeah. That's Craziness. crazy. Yeah, they were both just right in the pocket yeah. taking shots. I thought you held that record for most strikes landed. Most over ground, three rounds. Most over ground strikes rounds. landed. Yeah. Yeah. That was my first UFC fight against Wallel. It was like an insane number of ground strikes. I don't even remember. Gotta hit him harder, man. I know, what, right? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I, seriously, though, I should have. I should have done like the Munoz, like pull back as far as I possibly can to land my ground strikes. Just but, skyscraper ground and pound. Yeah, I was just landing donkey quick Kong. elbows. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think probably the UFC's got the rules right. I mean, the bare knuckle thing, too many cuts. You know, cup. You know, unless you got a titanium dick like Danny Castillo, you know, <laughs> to protect your balls, or it's so small it doesn't even matter if you get hit or not. Yeah. You miss me, queen. <laughs> they replay it. It's, a, yeah. it's a perfect shot. Yeah. Yeah, Do you guys remember anything. that classic UFC where uh, Joe San got pinned down by oh. Keith Hackney, mm-hmm. had one arm on his neck, and then started <laughs> his other hand and started hooking him in the balls from yes. side control. Yes, yes. Oh, you, you missed that. One I there. remember it well. The yeah. rape choke on the throat, rape and then choke, just turned and then his ball balls punch. into mush. <laughs> and funny thing is, he he got arrested for some sort of sexual. I mean, do you know the whole story with him? He ended Keith up hanging. Hackney? No, no, Joe San. Oh no, he ended up killing himself in prison. He hung himself or something, I believe. I don't know if that's true. I might have heard. <laughs> I might have made that up. I might have made that somebody, up. But somebody, please Google yeah. that. I don't, I don't trust. This I'm not at trying all. to spread disinformation, uh, but I'm pretty sure that he hung himself with his own underwear in prison, and he was in there for some sort of sexual crime. <laughs> Joe son. So maybe it was some weird pre-justice, like Minority Report. That's what I'm pre, saying. Yeah. Pre-justice. That's from karma for you. Like, yeah. I know what you're gonna do, motherfucker, <laughs> and I'm gonna try to end it right here. <laughs> Good ten punches to the balls. Yeah. Destroy his tiny little sexuality. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys, <clears throat> so you guys came from a mostly a wrestling background, right? Is that is that all of you? I know it's definitely you, TJ. Yeah. It's you as well, Danny. Mm-hmm. I came from a boxing background. Boxing background. Yeah. What yeah. do you think is, um, yeah, get that off the brain out of the way. Um, as far as pre- preparation for the MMA, I mean, the wrestling, everybody says, is kind of the best base to go from. Yeah, I, I feel like uh, wrestling is the best base, not only for what it could do for you in MMA, but just the way you learn how to train and the way you learn how to compete. Because you compete every weekend for like nine months in a, a college wrestling season or you know six months for a high you school wrestling season. practice weight cuts. Yeah, you're practicing your weight cuts every week. You're getting on the mat one-on-one competition every, every week. And uh, just the mentality of being a wrestler is completely different than any other sport I've been around for MMA. You just are so much more driven. And it just, for me, like, seeing all the guys that are jamming, I think that's the most important thing is just to, what it trains you to be outside of outside of athletics, just how competitive you are. I think it's hard to be um, a slacker if you're a wrestler. Yeah. If you you're, won't make it. Mm-hmm. If you're um, you know, a pretty good wrestler, so anyone in HR, if you're looking to hire anyone, I would uh, <laughs> lean towards a wrestler because in order to be successful, unless you're this crazy athlete, which I'm not, you have to really, uh, you have to really work at it. And it's just like one of the hardest things to learn. Like you can, you can, I wrestled, uh, I mean, I fought a guy named Tin Memes and he was just like, oh, give me a six week camp, give me an eight week camp and I'll be ready for your wrestling. It's like, no, I've been wrestling for 19 years. There's no way you can, there's no like fast forward, like advanced, like training to get you better. Mm -hmm. You have to be really explosive in order to be like somewhat good 
in wrestling if you've never wrestled at all. So it's like there's certain cases where they're really athletic, super fast twitch, really strong, and those guys could be okay. But um, – your wrestling's just yeah. I've wrestled since I was eight. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. can't have an eight week camp and pick it up like I have. It just well, you can't do that with anything. Yeah, you know. But I feel like when I when we started to learn boxing, boxing came a little bit easier. I don't know sure. if it's just coming from a Hispanic background where we watch boxing every weekend. Like Julio Cesar Chavez was my favorite fighter as a kid, Oscar De La Hoya, and we'd watch every single one. And how did I box? I never boxed ever until I was twenty eight. And then I started. So I started when I was 28. Hey, really? one thing about high-level wrestlers, though, they can all crack. Like, I've never met, like, a high-level wrestler who couldn't hit hard. They say you're born yeah. with a punch, but when you train every muscle in your body nonstop and compete every weekend, like TJ said and whatnot, you can come in, you have, like, a powerful punch. Like, Mendez, Palmer, Casillo, TJ, these guys can all crack, like, right off the bat. Mm-hmm. Like, with, with just, just having Well, they know strength. how to use leverage in their body to generate force. You know, it seems like that makes some sense. So you started when you were 28. Yeah. So you're 26. What are you doing? Uh, I'm sitting behind a desk. Yeah? Just finished. Well, didn't finish college. My college wrestling season was over. Didn't have any more money coming in. I went to a private school that was really expensive, small. I was just like, fuck, I got to get a job now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I went on Craigslist. Uh, saw a, sa- a, sale- a sales Put an position. Ad out for, uh, Went on redbook.com, just started scanning all the press. There we go, back to that again. <laughs> My bad. Uh, but uh, kind of lied, embellished the resume a little bit, saying that I had graduated. So you're working bachelor parties. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm just like, a, I'm the pizza man just showing up. Ripping all my How do you think he was off. named the last call? I mean, he was always the last stripper to show up, you know? It's Finishing true. the show. It's true. I shut it down. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I worked a desk job. I worked in sales and marketing for probably about five years. And then you're just kind of training, thinking yeah. about things, and all of a sudden you're like, fuck this. Well, some point there had to be this fuck this moment. No, there actually wasn't. There wasn't because I was done competing. My last, I, I lost in the NAIA national finals. So it's just kind of like a bad taste in my mouth. The last match I ever had, you know, the biggest match, the biggest stage, and I lost by two points. And it just kind of stuck with me and went to a down roll spiral. I was drinking a bunch and just like trying to mask that pain that I'd never be able to compete again yeah. because there's nothing like – I mean, you could be a softball team. Like, how cool? That's not very cool at all. Like, I don't want to compete on a softball team. I'm one-on-one. I've been one-on-one competing my whole entire life. Right. Um, so then I was on uh, MySpace. This is how long ago it was. It was <laughs> MySpace was huge. Uh, Uriah sent me. What was, um, what was your homepage song? Do you remember? I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember. I might have had multiple songs. Mm. Yeah. Multiple songs. You're dominating the MySpace. MySpace. Uriah. Uh, Uriah. He had posted a picture and I was making fun of him, like, "Oh, you sure look tall," because he was just super. So you short. knew Uriah. Yeah, Uriah and I uh, wrestled together in high school um, on the same all-star team. He was from Got a diff- different time, uh, a different town, and every summer we'd go up, up and down California wrestling at these all-star tournaments. And he was just like, "You got to come check out my gym." I just saw him fighting on TV. I went. He had a cool gym, three or four houses, and he's like, "Dude, I think you could do it." Like, he takes it certain type of person to be able to fight and be successful and i was like dude i'm not i got i got a 401k i got dental insurance like there's no way dude no way they brought a consultant in and they changed my commission scale and kind of punished me a little bit gave me a higher salary less commission um so kind of punishing me for being a good account manager Uh because i wasn't doing shit just on online all day on MySpace because the money was coming in. <laughs> just playing Space Invaders. <laughs> yeah, just kind of not doing anything, walk, coming to work hungover, not excited about life. Like, this is this sucks. I'm just going in circles. And uh, I was like, fuck this. I talked to my mom a little bit. And she's so like, there was yeah. that oh, point, <laughs> see? It's like, yeah. no, no, there wasn't any fuck this moment. And then I was like, fuck, fuck this. this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, as soon as they were like, we're going to uh, cut your commission and give you a little bit more salary, I'm just like, this, that's not fair. Like, I don't, yeah. don't want to sit behind the desk. So I gave my two weeks notice. They asked me to stay another two weeks, four weeks, par- packed up my apartment. And uh, I haven't looked back since. It's funny how, you know, the universe will do kind of weird shit like that to nudge you in the nudge you in the direction you know what if they had gone the other way and given you a more generous structure that might have detoured you a little farther i think about that with myself you know what if because i failed in a bunch of fucking stupid shit until i figured out on it you know and that was 
I really believe is the path I was supposed to be on. But what if one of these other things had been a wild success? You know, and I was. Yeah. You're just the best male stripper. In. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That would, that would have been a weird path. You know, I tried hard. Yeah. You, know, you just have this beautiful voice, and you're just singing. You're like, I, th- <laughs> I think I got something here. <laughs> but yeah, so at that point, they decided to kind of fuck you up a little bit, and then it took you on this path. Yeah, and it, it's uh, seriously, it's probably been the best thing that ever happened to me because, um, you know, karma has nothing to do with fighting. But I feel like if you're the best possible person, and uh, you just go out there and fight like good things happen and that's Mm -hmm. just kind of how i've been like i try to eat clean try to be except for sticks you know but for the most part i'm a happy nice (laughs) person chris holds (laughs) nice person and uh and danny is (laughs) chris's friend slash nemesis well that's that's danny's all of his friends you know like you're his family you're also his nemesis because he's gonna make fun of you he's gonna break you down on any stupid thing you do and make you want to go kill yourself (laughs) But then you become a better person of it. And it's the it? reaction that, that yeah. I feed off of. So yeah. if you're just like super angry, then that's when it's just like green, <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah. But if you kind of just brush it off, I'm like, eh, that wasn't that fun. I didn't get the yeah. reaction I was looking for. <laughs> but sticks is just like, duh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, he's just like. Uh, he's the most <laughs> dangerous nerd on the planet. The deadliest nerd. Yeah, deadliest he's, nerd. Uh, he's really tough, but that could, be a, that could be a new show for him. Yeah. Deadliest, 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 deadliest nerd. 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 <laughs> yeah, he's a really good guy, but uh, you could tell he's been sheltered a little bit, so I kind of <laughs> like to mess with him a little bit. But he has a he has a good head on the shoulder though. He's, huge head. He's he, huge head too. <laughs> he's big. He's uh <laughs> he's really dedicated and focused and that's what I respect the most about sure. him. It's like anytime I see him he's stretching or doing something that has to do with fighting. He wakes up early to drink water before practice. He has like 2 hour alarm before he has to leave just so yeah, he can Yeah, you hydrate. could see that kind of crazy regimentation mm-hmm. of you know and, and with all with all you guys you know you're a little bit off mm-hmm. and i think that's something that makes you good i'm a little bit off like you notice that in a lot of people you know rogan's he's a little bit off all of us that you know really want to push ourselves we get a little quirky and i think that's just kind of part of the game have you met our coach <laughs> yeah and Dwayne. <laughs> yeah. Dwayne is working combinations at all times in his, his sleep, head in his sleep dude always i mean he's it's really interesting to see how much he lives and breathes that but that's kind of the path to mastery you know i told this story on with robert green on the podcast about bill bradley the basketball player for the knicks and princeton all-time scoring leader he was completely obsessive he's a little bit tall but gangly couldn't really uh, play ball that well and so he decided he's like if i'm going to be in the nba i got to have a great handle i got to be able to dribble the ball like nobody else and see the court so he developed these glasses that he would put on that blocked the vision of his hands as he was dribbling and he would just dribble four hours six hours eight hours a day do these different drills constantly he even went on a cruise ship one time and they thought all right fine finally he's not going to have to practice his parents took him on a cruise and he but no he put his fucking glasses on and was dribbling up and down the cruise ship in the bottom galleys the whole time and eventually he became one of the best ball handling and passing you know power forwards in the game so all of these crazy kind of obsessive traits tend to Right along with the path to path to greatness. Mm. Crazy good, yeah. Crazy's good, yeah. It's what to our, cer- our master Tong degree. used to say. Yeah, yeah. Our old uh, stand-up coach, he'd always say, "I like crazy, crazy good." You know, <coughs> simple. The guy's profound. MMA crazy. That was his best one. Mm-hmm. Genius, if you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> so TJ, you've had a you had a kind of a, a different different path than uh, than Danny. And yeah. You kind of, you had that kind of that country boy wrestling thing going. It seems like yeah, pro yeah. hunting. Yeah, f- fighting started out the same way, but yeah, my my completely different. He grew up in the city, has yeah. no idea how to survive in the wild, and it would die instantly if there was no <laughs> grocery store. You know, that's not very funny. It's the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you got a, you got a sick kick game though. Yeah, your shoe game. Yeah, his, is oh, on dude, point. he has a whole bedroom of shoes. Yeah. He's a and, he, and he's got like tailored sweatpants. Yeah. No, like normally you buy sweatpants, but his are like custom tailored. Yeah. You know, you can you see the You don't want to cover up the line. shoe. I mean, nah. you got to see it all the time. No, nah, it like, it like mm. he has the split in the calf to yeah. properly show his calves <laughs> off in the sweatpants. I see it. Yeah. He's got the ass <laughs> flap where he just like, <laughs> Yeah. Keep going, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I grew up in the country, small town, Angels Camp, California. You know, I grew up hunting, you know, raising pigs and steers and, and wrestling. My dad got me involved in wrestling when I was eight years old. Um, got addicted to it, just the competition, I think. And 
my whole family is ridiculously competitive. You know, I've got two other brothers, and I think that's what kind of bred me to be the way I am. And, uh, yeah, went through high school, did good in high school, got a full-ride scholarship to Cal State Fullerton. That's where actually I met Uriah as well as through wrestling. He tried recruiting me to wrestle to Davis, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I didn't end up going to Davis. I went to Southern California. It was way too nice down there to pass up and, yeah. you know, way better-looking girls, and the school wasn't as hard. And yeah. <laughs> You know, I can go on forever. But uh, So I went to Fullerton. So you're happy with your choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was yeah. good. So I went to, I went to Fullerton, and uh, – Went through wrestling, and like, like Danny, I didn't finish how I wanted to. I made it to NCAAs three years, but kind of bombed out every year and was ranked pretty high, but never just put it together, you know? So I still had so that. So do you think it was more the mental game then? You just weren't quite mentally at the level that you needed to be to compete, or was it a physical limit at that point? You think? Um, I think I maybe did a little bit more of a mental thing. I put so much pressure on myself, and my family's been huge into wrestling behind me, and I think I just put the, the pressure behind me and, and, and kind of let it affect my career. Mm -hmm. And uh, That could be it, but I think um, that we were talking about it, Chad, too. I think a lot of it is just the grind of wrestling. Mm -hmm. uh, you only yeah. have one tournament in that pretty much sums up that year, and it's the last tournament of the year, and you mm -hmm. have to qualify for them. So you've been grinding for the whole year, straight the conditioning, running sprints, doing all this stuff. So the stuff. people who peak at that tournament are the people who are going to well, win. Well, you're going to have a coach that does that for you. That's one thing. I mean, I love my coach. My coach was awesome. Not to rag on him. He's a super hard worker, but too hard. We always started like two months earlier than everyone and worked hard all the way throughout the season. So you might have been peaking I two did. months before, well, I, I, before everybody else. Yeah, one of the hardest tournaments in the year, I took second at uh, – the Las Vegas Open Tournament, in which they, all the good schools go to. And yeah, so, you took second? Yeah, took second at that tournament, which is huge, you know. And mm -hmm. I was ranked top eight in the nation and and uh, just got to the end of the year and was just burnt out, you know. I yep. mean, that, I was hurt. I went in with a pinched nerve in my neck, lost like 70% of the strength in my left left side of my body. Like, kind of crazy, just kind of beat myself up, which still doesn't. So be. rigorous switch-handed masturbation is the only thing that brings <laughs> yeah, that exactly. back, Yeah, right? exactly. I mean, you got to get the coordination back. <laughs> yeah, Half for sure. To. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I went through season, didn't get what I wanted to do. So, you know, I had that edge, uh, urge to still compete, but I was going to grad school and uh, to become a physician's assistant, hopefully. But uh, I met Uriah at a wrestling camp I was teaching. He's like, man, you should fight. And I watched you wrestle. You're always mean, and I feel like you could do this. I man, I feel like it's something you could be good at. You know, I, I talked it back and forth, and you know, finally just made up the mind to go up to the team off of mail and told myself I'd give myself a year and see if I was any good at it. And uh, if I was, I would stick stick it through. If not, I'd go back to school. And I'm glad I made the decision because it's, yeah. it's worked Fuck out yeah, awesome. Yeah, we all are. Yeah. So so one of the last questions here, if you guys all had kids, and I don't think any of you have kids, do you? No. Right. None that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the girls that saw me on TV would be like, oh, I better hit them up. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some money. Uh, yeah, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chickiness. Yeah. Um, if you had, when you have kids, is this a path that you would kind of encourage your kids to go down? I don't know, man. I mean, it's tough. I mean, I'd let them make their own decisions, but even wrestling. I mean, wrestling was such a tough sport. I, I love for what it did to me as a person, mm -hmm. but, I mean, it was so tough growing up that I don't, I don't know if I'd want to get him involved in it. I'd let him make that choice, I guess. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah, I have a, a love-hate uh, love relationship with wrestling. Yeah. So I've, I think we kind of had – touched over it a little bit like I'm not even sure I'd have my kids wrestle even though it taught me to be the person I am today a hard worker like I, I feel like I'm one of the hardest workers and and that I wouldn't have had that without wrestling I don't think mm -hmm. you know maybe learning my mom was a single parent I witnessed her struggle and stuff so that kind of helped me be a, um, a strong person a hard worker but I think um, I would probably start my kids off with gymnastics golfing and um yeah. you know <laughs> once sure. uh once they figure out their body and stuff like that and if once they'll be able to do a backflip and and control their body i figure they can do any sport after that i would say martial yeah. arts for sure but like the head trauma of contact growing up you know with boxing or muay thai or yeah MMA, so how early did you start boxing i was getting hit really early like in, my, in the head a lot uh -huh. That's why I've I probably lost at least a hundred IQ points. <laughs> <laughs> you were destined to be super genius, man. Yeah, exactly. But they, robbed from me, they, they so, boxed you into yeah, just being smart. Yeah, exactly. But alpha brains are bringing me back slowly, slowly. <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, to avoid the head trauma, like the martial arts, the respect and discipline from martial arts. I mean, for kids is great. Like uh, man, you know, uh, boy or girl. But just the competitive side, I mean, jiu-jitsu and wrestling, I'm down with that. But, like, any kind of striking, they'd have to be 18 and But you know, how, you know how fucking kids are, though. They're going to yeah. see their dad. Yeah. And once you get them a little taste, like, 
Ooh, that was fun to pin that kid down and yeah. make him squirm. How much more fun will it be when I punch him while I do yeah. that? You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. You Definitely know? spinning hook kick him. You know, yeah. that'd be cool too. Definitely yeah. gonna get my kid involved in a sport though, for sure. Like me and Danny were talking about it just like last night or the night before about how it like creates this uh, social this like i don't know you, you just become so much more of a man from it and and learn how to live life and and become a family and just you learn so many great things from being on a team and uh you know going back to our boy sticks you know he was never on a team he was always kind of doing his own thing individual and uh you know he's a little socially awkward he's a nerd but we're that's what me and Danny were talking about this you know you got to get involved in some sorts of situation of it's going to get you out there get made fun of get picked on and mm-hmm. and grow up from it you know like Go through those things. Yeah, test test yourself in both team environment and bringing out the the growth in yourself. I think that's one of the things that I would recommend for daughters too, and, mm. and girls growing up. You know, I mean, I think there's so much that you get out of the way. You know, being able to just push through adversity and and go through all of that shit. I mean, yeah, girls are going to have a huge trial when they give birth. You know, that's going to be a major test or whatever. But getting <laughs> the the preparation for these difficult times you know you get that through sports usually i know, think you kind of find your way. role in society also um yeah. in those small teams like kind of like the tribe thing so when you go out into the real world um you know you can you can tell people who are the leaders of kind of some of the packs Hold that just, same level of confidence yeah just when you walk sure. in the door mm-hmm. jenna was saying that uh uh, Jenna was telling me that yesterday. You were that. listening closely. <laughs> <laughs> you so can, you can probably tell yeah, me more about, really more, more about my kinda, assistant than I know. As soon as you walk in the door, you can kind of tell. You know, you can kind of yeah. tell. Like, so if I were to walk in the door and you guys were just to v- re- record it, you'd see you completely different. You also flat different. noses and cauliflower ears. <laughs> and fucking yeah, but if veins if, popping yeah. out of your arms. I mean, it doesn't, I were take, to walk doesn't in. take a fucking scientist to figure that out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, long sleeve <laughs> with a beanie on. If no, I were to I walk in and then two seconds later, let's say sticks were to walk in there's just kind of a different <laughs> you just I quit it. picking on sticks man. i'm not picking on them it's Dude, just we love the sticks truth. it's the sticks truth is our homeboy no, i think honestly the truth is all of you carry that same kind of, it, it's a different frequency you know there's a different frequency when you've tested yourself and broken it down to the base level where you guys don't necessarily have these excessive programs that are running these egos that have gone unchecked and these things that you're you know who you are. Mm. You know, you've put yourself, broken it down to the very end of your being, you know, in a weight cut, going into the fight. You get to find out who exactly you are at the very base level. And that knowledge, it shows, you know, and, and athletes have it and other people have it too. You know, people who have been on the spiritual path in a real earnest way, someone who's drunk ayahuasca a hundred times. You know, you look at them and you're like, wow, they've really cut out the excessiveness of their essence you know, like they know who the fuck they are and in a way your competition can do the same thing you know really get down to the core of who you are and that's that's a real gift to have and people can people can read that you know because there's no desperation there's no clinginess there's no need that's coming from anything else you don't have to prove yourself to anybody exactly you yeah. just really know at the very core like this is me let's do it makes a lot of sense my friends, it has been an honor to hang with you. It's been a lot of fun. We're going to have to do this a lot more. I appreciate the support on it. That's been fucking rad. Yeah. Glad we've been able to help you out a little bit. And uh, look forward to supporting and being a part of this this ride all the way. Yeah, I'm excited to, to join the family, dude. It's awesome being Hell here. Yeah. And I, I want this want podcast to end. to end so we can go wake surfing right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. But seriously. <laughs> but for real. Yeah, let's get out of here. Yeah, for sure. We'll have some fun. Thank you, guys. How can they get a hold of all you guys? Um, give us your Twitter and uh, what the best way. Snapchat. Yeah. Uh, you know, TJ, whatever. <laughs> Snapchat. <some> selfies. <laughs> selfies. <laughs> selfies. Uh, you just follow me on TJ Dillashaw, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Yeah, same thing. It'd be uh, Last Call 155, and that's Instagram, Twitter. Plenty of fish. Probably Facebook. Tinder. <laughs> No, none of that stuff. <laughs> of that stuff. Just get a hold of me by certified mail. I'm at school. Uh, he has a PO box. We'll do chain homeless. letters. I'll write back. Um, pigeons are accepted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Carrier pigeons, yeah. Uh, at JBMMA155. That's my Twitter and Instagram. Beautiful. Thank you, my friends. We will do this again sometime soon. Look forward Thank to it. Thank you. Got it. Right up.